So I had a student claim to me I had not made a video on Fisher projections, and I really remember doing a video on Fisher projections. And I went back through it, and you know what? There was a video on Fisher projections. But to the student's credit, and we can't mention my name, so let's just call her Hannah. To Hannah's credit, it was actually really buried deep in a playlist. So for the sake of students who really don't want to sit through, at this point, only 17 videos, probably more as the time goes on, list in my videos in my list, let me give you a quick primer on Fisher projections. Now, the challenge with Fisher projection is that the way we use a Fisher projection is not the way the molecule naturally exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hexane complex. One, two, three, four, five, six hexane molecules. And I keep looking down here because I got a model on the table. And let's say I have halogens. We'll call it Cl, Cl. CL and CL. And I want to draw a Fisher projection of this molecule. Well, your instinct here is to look at it and say, well, if it's out, it's to the right, and if it's back, it's to the left. And that's not really the way to do it. Because this is not the way a Fisher projection looks. If we look at a Fisher projection, so we draw it out here. One, two, three, four. So I've got carbons on each end. In this case, they're blue in my model. I'll pick it up in just a minute. This is not zigzag like this, it's not staggered. This is how the molecule would naturally exist if it was like floating around in the air, or if it was at its lowest point because, lowest energy point, because it keeps all the groups anti to one another. But the way the Fisher projection looks is that each of these little crosses here is that we have one carbon in the backbone going back, above and below, and then we're looking between the bonds. So that's what a cross represents, is that we've got carbons going back, well, I guess from your point of view, they're coming back, and then you've got the, you're looking between the two groups that are coming out. So this is the molecule I've got up on the board. I've got my two blue carbons on the ends. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I've tagged, yeah, I've tagged the carbons coming out as white, and the carbon, and the, sorry, tagged the chlorines going back forward as white, and the chlorine going back as red. So in order to figure out the Fischer projection, what we need to do is we need to start with a carbon. We'll pick a top carbon, and we want to rotate this molecule in such a way, there we go, molecule in such a way that we've got a carbon going away from you, and we're looking between the two other bonds. So in this case, I've got the chlorine going to the right, and that'll be this chlorine. Now, if I go down to the next one, we're looking at it the wrong way. We've got a carbon coming out and a carbon coming out. So what we need to do is we need to rotate the bond just like that, and what we see now is that our chlorine is on the right again. We go to the next one, same problem. This is coming out and this is coming out. So we need to rotate this carbon. So now that carbon's coming out, that carbon's going back, and we've got another chlorine on the right. We go down to the last one. Again, same problem. This is coming out, this is coming out. We need to rotate it. So this way, the two carbons above and below the carbon we're looking at are actually coming, going back into the board, coming towards me, and we see we got a chlorine on the left. Now, when we started this video, you saw it was zigzag, right? But now if you look at it, it's in a loop. So this is really what a Fisher projection is doing, is it's taking this chain and it's curling it into a coil. And this coil is how we're drawing this structure. Now, the way this looks, it looks like the chlorines are going in opposite directions, but here they're on the same side. Well, as drawn, that's correct. And the staggered conformation, this chlorine's popping out in the board, this one's going in. But when we coil it around, they end up getting to be on the same sides. Somewhere, oh, there you are. That forward facing, that white chlorine going back, and that red chlorine going, sorry, white chlorine going forward, the red chlorine going back are now on the same side because of this rotation. So this is the complication of Fisher projections, is that it's not the staggered chain, it's actually a loop and we have to translate it to a loop. Now that said, that's what also makes cyclic compounds very easy to draw. So let's say I take this member, this ring, or I take the chain and I make it into a ring, so I bond the two in blue carbons. Well, super easy. What you do is you take it and you crush it down into a plane. So you crush it down into the planar configuration. 
Now, instead of having just this straight up and down, and I'll redraw it, So this is what this ring looks like now. All I do is create a loop. And create a line for each carbon in the ring. So this big line here represents this bond here. Now, all I have to do is arbitrarily pick one. As long as I'm consistent, I'll get the right answer. Now, the reason why I say the rings are so much easier, inherently they're already in a loop. So if I start with this carbon and I start working my way around, I've got my chlorine on the left, like I do up there, chlorine on the left again, chlorine on the left, and then just there to the side, you see the chlorine on the right. So this is your quick primer on Fisher projections. They are not the staggered conformation that you see for the line bond drawing. What it actually is is that you need to take your staggered conformation and rotate it so this way the carbons are basically forming a coil and then start looking along that coil to figure out where they appear on the left or the right side of the diagram. And for rings, this is inherently easy because they're already in a coil.